I have no idea how any of these photos are gonna turn out, but we're gonna find out. Jump here real quick and show you guys what my setup was. Bought this Pentas 645. I kind of went crazy on Sinsta's website. All right, y'all, I'm about to head out to Montana now. I've had a very slow morning. They gave me this Nissan, which I'm not a fan of Nissan. It doesn't have driver assist and all that, and so on long road trips, so like all that stuff just makes it a lot easier. But um, hardest part of going on these trips is having to say goodbye to Sedona. She's just too interested right now. It's in the truck. So yeah, y'all, um, I guess I'm just gonna do a vlog on this whole trip. Where I'm going to Montana is like 16, 18 hours, so I'm debating if I'm gonna try to do the full trip. I'm bringing all my camping shit just in case. So usually on shoots like this, the brands will fly you out. I just, I'm just kind of over flying. I've flown at least a double times this past couple months during COVID and yeah, it's just, I don't know. I hate being in airports just sitting around and all that. So I just like driving cause I can, you know, sightseeing, take detours and go explore and all that. But yeah, I picked up a Pentax 645N. I want to try to shoot a roll of that while I'm out here. I had to pack up all my cinema gear and I brought my Canon R5 cause I might try to do some like 60 uh, frames per second stuff on this gig with it. But anytime I'm heading out east or north, wherever, you usually have to take the, the 15 all the way out. There's just gorgeous little building out here. One time I was with Erin Michelle, she's a guest model, and uh, we stopped here to take some shots and people came out yelling at us. So I guess people live there, I don't know, it looks really abandoned, so I don't know if it's squatters or what, but yeah. Uh, I just wanna get a film shot. I've shot uh, quite a handful of 35 millimeter uh, film, but never too much uh, medium formats. I have no idea how any of these photos are gonna turn out, but we're gonna find out. You guys, I've been shooting mirrorless for too long. I was looking through the viewfinder and I just clicked the button and then I realized, wait, this is an electronic viewfinder. So I messed up that exposure, was super blown out. It was probably like four stops over, but um, I'm using this Peter McKinnon variable ND on here uh, cause the max shutter speed's 1000. And uh, I'm not a fan of this variable ND filter. I've made several videos about it. And when you have big blue skies like this, it makes them brown. It turns them really gross. I'm probably gonna order another Freewell one for this lens. I just messed up the exposure and you only get, I think 15 shots on this. It's really hot out here, y'all. I'm gonna be making more videos about this. Uh, I'm gonna develop at home and scan at home and all that. Cause if I can figure out how to do that and get clean results, um, I will shoot a lot more film on uh, every shoot, so especially stuff like this. All right, this is like two days since I've been home. I couldn't really film while I got on location because everyone was there and we had a scout that day and then the next day we were filming. But yeah, I just wanted to jump in real quick and show you guys what my setup was uh, for that video. So usually I rely heavily on the Z-Cam E2S6, but I was like, let's see what the, the Canon R5 can do. So what ended up happening was I left the Sony 200 on it and I would just keep the strap on me and I just would keep it in 120 frames per second. So anytime when I was close to things, uh, the 18 to 35 Sigma on the Z cam was my go-to camera. And then everything that was kind of far off that I couldn't get up to because it's a cowboy shoot with people galloping and all that kind of stuff, um, I would switch back to this. So I was, I've was i been contemplating getting a second uh, Z cam E2S6 and just dual rigging them and just keeping two different lenses on each. But I thought that might be a bit excessive. Maybe I'll do the F6, I don't know. But so far, this thing was pretty damn amazing on it. I didn't think I would like it that much. I wish I got some footage of me dual rigging it and all that, but again, I was working, there wasn't much stuff I could do. What's up, y'all? So, that was a, uh, e I don't wanna say easy shoe, it was a chill shoe, but I'm pretty tired after that. I'm now back on the road. I'm gonna try to make it straight back home without stopping, obviously, to pee and get gas and all that, but uh, I'm gonna see if I can make it home in one day. It's only like a 14 hour drive, so it's not like insane. Yeah, maybe I won't put this video out. I don't know, we'll see. But I did shoot a lot of film. I shot a whole world 35, and, and 120. So we'll see how that turns out. Maybe I'll include that on in this. That's what I'll do. I'll make this like a whole film. My first time shooting film. Maybe. I don't know. All right, y'all. So I tried doing this in my room first and I blew a socket out because uh, this is still a little heater thing. Ooh. <coughs> oh, if I can figure out how to develop at home. Uh, thanks to Sinstel. Man, these chemicals are kind of strong. Do a lot more film. Yeah, I'm trying to figure this out and uh, no idea what I'm doing, so I'm watching YouTube videos on it. Go YouTube. So this thing is pretty dope. 
I developed film before with a friend and he heats his up uh, on the stove with a the thermometer and all that so he recommended all this stuff and this is probably gonna make it way easier. Oh, it's done, let me go. All right guys, so the reason I'm getting more into film, I've shot film on and off all throughout my career, but all my current like modern favorite photographers, they all have a super filmic look and after you do research and like kind of stalk their Instagram and all that, you realize they're all shooting medium format film. Um, and so I went and bought this Pentas 645N. Uh, it has autofocus and all that, uh, super easy to use, um, Sedona loves it as you can see. I was spending like weeks trying to get my edits to look like theirs. I was like, oh, you can make digital look like it. You can, but in order to do it, you have to use Photoshop. And I don't want to sit there and, and have to use Photoshop in every single image that I do. I really like Capture One or like whatever raw processing you're using. I really like those programs because you can copy and paste color edits. You can set up actions in Photoshop, but it's still kind of slower than uh, having a raw processor. So like, well, I might as well just start shooting film. And originally I thought I was going to start shooting film just so I could uh, like color match the digital and like really get really close and maybe create some presets for you guys. But I, I mean, I'm still going to do that, but I think I'm going to shoot more film. Uh, I kind of went crazy on Sin Still's website. All the film that I shot, I used to send to labs, but I really fucking hate how labs, they always send you back, at least in Southern California, the labs, they send you back your film looking like wedding photography. And I fucking hate wedding photography and the whole pastel look. So I was like, I'll just invest in all this, start doing it myself. Um, so yeah, I got the lab box. This is like a whole new thing. It looks kind of complicated compared to the Patterson tank, but it looks more streamlined, I guess you could say. Um, so it's kind of give and take some both. And then I got the temperature control system by Sinstill. You can just like warm up water in a pot and use a thermostat, but this just kind of makes it easier. You can do it all in one setup and you don't have to run around and worry about the temperature because that's the hardest part about developing color film. And also, I also got an Epson V600 and I'll probably use Negative Lab Pro. Um, so yeah, stand by for that. <laughs> 